Hello, this video is created to demonstrate for you how to set up your remote server in your site definition. So what we're going to do is, assuming that you have the Dreamweaver CC software, and you're going to open that, and you're going to go up to Site from the top menu bar, and click New Site, and your first tab that comes up is just some basic information about the website that you're creating. So you can call this um, I don't know, homework, whatever you want to call it. This is just for your for your reference. And then the important thing is you're going to want to select the folder that you have set up for your classwork. So if you come in, like I have mine set up for under websites. And here I've got my folders, my lessons folder that I copied my material from the textbook. I've got separate folders for homework one through three. You probably have several more. And then I have my demo folder. So what I'm going to do for this is I'm just going to um, come in and create and select the main folder that I have everything set up in, which is this. You're going to click select folder. And if you were just developing locally on your own computer, you could just click save and go from there. But the purpose of this is to show you how to connect to the remote server as well. So we're going to click on this second little box here, servers. And from here, this is where you're going to put the information that I have either emailed or messaged to you, which has your own specific account, username, and password, and URL for the web hosting account that I have created for you on my own server. So in order to put that information in, you're going to click this plus button, which is to add a new server, and you're going to fill out some basic information. Now what I recommend is that you use the server name CWS. Again, that's just for your own reference, and that's short for College Web Server, which is the domain name collegewebserver.com for um, my web server. You're going to connect using FTP and the FTP address is just www.collegewebserver.com by default it's going to be port 21 you can keep that as is and then here is where you're going to enter your username. Now remember your username is an eight digit or eight character field so mine is demo and then C-O-L-L -L at the end of it. So yours is, is usually in the format of the first initial of your first name and the next seven characters of your last name. If your last name is not seven characters, then it starts spelling the word college until you get to eight characters. Okay, and then your password. And then before you click the test button to see if your account logs in correctly, I want you to put this information in the root directory. You're going to put a slash public underscore HTML. And basically that's saying, hey, when you log in, I want you to go to this directory. And the public underscore HTML directory is going to be your web directory. Everything that is in there can be viewable um, by anyone on the web unless you have some other settings changed. Okay, and then you need to change your web URL. So by default, it's going to put that public underscore HTML at the end, and we don't want that. So we want it just to say your URL that I sent you. And for the example of mine, it's demo.collegewebserver.com. Usually yours is going to be in the format of your first initial of your first name and then your last name. Okay, so when you are done here, click test. And you should get that message that Dreamweaver connected to your web server successfully. If you did not, please take a look and make sure that everything is filled in correctly. The most important thing here is your FTP address is right and that your username and password is correct and that you have public underscore HTML as the root directory. Okay, so what you want to do is click Save, 
and then you get taken back to the screen and you're done. So you don't need anything about version control or advanced settings on here. And one little tip, because I always do this, years and years after using this um, system, I'm going to save that. If I go back up to my site and I want to make a change, I can click Manage Sites. Do not click this minus button when you have your site defined, because if you click it, it's going to instantly delete your um, site definition. It's not going to delete your f folders or files or anything, but it's going to delete all that information that you just stored. And I don't know how many times I've, I have done this in the past and I have to go reset it again. So if you want to come back into your site definition and edit it, make sure to select the little pencil and then from there your window will come up. And then same thing with this window under servers. Do not click that minus button. Make sure to click the pencil if you need to make changes. Okay. All right. Now, the important thing to note here is using this files directory. Um, and again, this might be in a different location depending on what uh, format you have selected in Dreamweaver. If you click expanded, see it's much, much different. And by default, when you first open the system up, um, we're going to be in compact. Okay, so that's how you can change between different workspaces, and you can you can create your own workspace, which um, the book will teach you how to do that. Okay, so by um, default now we start out in our local files directory. So when you're developing web pages you're going to want to develop your pages locally, especially if you're just creating HTML and CSS pages, because your computer is set up so that you don't need to have any other special software to view an HTML and CSS page. So most of your development work you're going to just do locally on your computer, and then when you're done with your pages and you're ready to upload them to the server, then that is when you would connect to the server. So let me show you how to do that. So let's say I have a page. I'm just going to create a new simple HTML page here in code view. Okay, very, very simple. I click in design view. And that's what it's going to look like. I'm going to save it save as and the good thing about having that site definition created is it will automatically go to that folder that you have told it is your local folder so i'm just going to call this test.html i'm going to click save okay so right now i have saved that in my demo folder and you'll see there it is test.html here is my local view I can click the little plus button and see that that is there. Now sometimes you might be making changes and saving things and not seeing it reflected in here yet. You can click this little refresh button at the top and it will go and grab any other files to put in here um, to make sure that your um, all your files are being seen. So just keep that in mind. If you don't see something here, you know you saved it, then go ahead and click that refresh button. Now again, this is my local view. If I wanted to see what my remote view or my FTP server has on it, I would need to connect to it. And in order to connect to it, I click on this little thing that looks like a electrical plug. So you click on it and it will attempt to make that connection and so you've got the little check mark and it looks like the little electrical outlook outlet is plugged in then that means you are connected to your remote server to see the files in your remote server you just switch from the local view to the remote server and you will see depending ideally your remote server is going to match your local files. Now, I've used this for several classes, so I have a bunch of other files in here, but you will see things like 
400.shtml and all these other files in here and these are files that are created as um, for your web account so that in the event that um, your site user gets a 404 page I'm sure you've seen these when you're browsing on other websites and that page doesn't exist it will show you what if is, a, is written on that 404 page so you can make custom pages and things like that okay so that is your remote server and you'll see you're in the public underscore HTML directory now in order to get my test.html page up to the remote server I'm gonna highlight it and I'm gonna click the up button which is put so put this file on the remote server and then it's going to say should dependent files be included in the transfer and I'm going to go ahead and, and just say yes but there aren't any dependent files a dependent file would be like if I had a, a cascading style sheet that I was creating with this page would I want that to go um, up to the web server and generally yes when you're developing and you want to push all of your changes up you're going to push anything um, that's associated with that file up. Okay, so now let's go back to my remote view. And so, see, I don't see it, but didn't it get uploaded? Now go ahead and click refresh. And oh, that's right, it's in the demo folder. So there it is. Dem it created the folder demo and the file test.html. So now I'm going to go to my web browser and it's there's my URL demo.collegewebserver.com and I'm going to go to that directory demo and then slash test.html and that welcome to my website that's the same page that we just created here. So this is why the file management is so important that what you have in your local machine should be reflected in your remote server again mine is going to look a little different than yours but as you're developing as you're doing your homework assignments as you're working on your lessons keep everything structured exactly the same way and then when you get when you have your remote server set up just upload them and then make sure that your URL follows that same file structure. So you've got your URL and then the name of the folder and then the name of the file. That is how all of these work. So if you, you know, expect to go out to your URL and click on the name of your URL and you don't see anything there, then you're going to um, want to take a look and see oh that's right it should be I need to connect to a, di a different directory so your URL connects directly to the public underscore HTML directory and we'll talk about how to we're going to create um, towards the end of the class a, a page that will link everything up and it'll basically be um, an index.html page and then we'll link to all of our um, uploaded content that we've created for the class. Okay, so I hope that helps explain the process of how to set up the remote server and how to use your web hosting account that I have assigned you. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to post in the, uh, the support or virtual office discussion forum or send me a message through our learning management system. Okay, thanks. Bye.